What's up guys, producer T Customs with tcustoms.com. Today's tutorial topic comes from a question that was sent in on Facebook from Norbert. He says, I'm using a similar live template to you where I have each of my drum samples on independent drum racks. Uh, my question is, how do I trigger the samples as if they're on the same drum rack and also record them uh, independently? So first, let me just kind of uh, give an overview of what he's talking about. Maybe for those of you who have watched some of our previous videos, you guys probably already know what, what he's referring to as far as re uh, recording the drum samples on independent tracks. Now, when you go to make your drum tracks, you may just throw all of your drum samples into a single drum rack and go from there. Now, the reason why I like to separate them ahead of time is for the mixing process. That way, if I wanna put certain effects on my snare, I wanna put certain, um, panning or delay, I wanna do certain things to certain samples, I already have them uh, separated. And then also for the overall levels, I mean, when you're going to mix, you wanna make sure all your levels are right. When I have totally in independent control over the snare versus the kick, um, it just gives me a lot more flexibility when I go for my mixing. It doesn't require me to do any individual exports or anything like that. Okay, so for simplification, I'm just gonna deal with a kick and a snare. In this particular tutorial, you could obviously apply this, add more elements, add more tracks, hi-hat, uh, other percussion, whatever you wanted to add. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a kick and drag it into the first cell, C1, of this first drum rack, and also take a snare and drag it into the C sharp one cell. So now I just arm the track, and I can trigger both of these samples from my MPD32 controller. So in order to go ahead and separate these, um, these samples into independent tracks, what I'm gonna do, I've got my kick and my C1. Now I'm gonna take this snare, and now that I have a snare drum rack already created, I'm gonna go ahead and drag this sample over to C sharp one of my second drum rack. So now if I click on kick, you're gonna see that the kick is in C1, and I click on snare, and I've got my snare in C sharp one of this totally separate drum rack. So now that I have my drum samples separated, the whole idea is to trigger both of these samples at the same time as if they're on a single drum rack. So to do that, all I do is make sure that I arm both of these drum racks for recording. Uh, you can do that by a simple control click. So now I can trigger my MPD32 on my C, C1 and C sharp one, trigger both of those samples at the same time. Now since I only have one sample per drum rack, some of this MIDI information is just blank MIDI information. It's not actually triggering any sample. One of the things I like to do just sort of as a cleanup process is just delete the blank MIDI information that's in there. So for my kick, I would basically delete the, the blank uh, snare MIDI info. And then the same for the snare, I would go in and delete the kick. If you leave it in, it's not gonna make a difference as long as you're not loading samples in those those cells, it just kind of for me is a cleanup. That way there's no confusion down the road when I'm making the track. So this is really the whole idea and, and way that I record my drum samples again to have independent control and have them on separate tracks when I go for my mixing. It's easier for me just to kind of keep everything separated like this. So anyway, I hope that was helpful. Hopefully, um, you know, that answered your question. So if you guys have any other questions, Ableton specific or you know, beat making questions, whatever, hit me up on the Facebook page, uh, Twitter, and obviously here on YouTube, you can uh, shoot me a message, uh, leave a comment below, like the video, and you know, subscribe if you haven't done so. I'll catch y'all in the next video, peace.